In this video, I'll teach you how to import an Excel file into Microsoft Project so that the imported project now has summary tasks and subtasks. You know, a lot of Microsoft Project users started out with the old familiar friend that we call Microsoft Excel. And we started creating projects in Excel long before we created them in Microsoft Project. If you're one of those users who needs to migrate projects from Excel into Microsoft Project, I'll teach you one trick you need to know in your Excel workbook that will result in summary tasks and subtasks in the project in Microsoft Project. So let's get started. So first of all, here's an Excel workbook containing a project. You can see that the project information is very basic. I've got a task name column, start date and finish date columns, and a responsible party column. That's the people that are working on the tasks. You can also see that I've attempted to build some semblance of a little work breakdown structure. I've got the scope phase. That would be a summary task in Microsoft Project. And then indented below it, I've got what we would call subtasks in Microsoft Project. So I've tried to build a decent looking project that could be managed in Excel, but Will Microsoft Project understand the indenting when I import it as a Microsoft Project file? Let's find out. Here's how to import a Microsoft Excel workbook into Microsoft Project. Click the File tab, and then click the Open tab in the Backstage. On the Open page, Click the Browse button. In the Open dialog, navigate to the folder containing the Excel workbook. Then, in the lower right corner, click the Pick List button where you currently see Projects star.mpp listed. On that list, choose the Excel workbook type. Select the Excel workbook you want to import into Microsoft Project and click the Open button. Microsoft Project will launch the Import Wizard dialog to walk you through the import process. Click the Next button to begin. On the Map page, leave the New Map item selected and click the Next button. On the Import Mode page, leave the item selected as a new project and click the Next button. On the Map Options page, select the Tasks checkbox, as that's probably the only type of data that you have in your Excel workbook, and then click the Next button. On the Task Mapping page, Microsoft Project will attempt to map the columns from Microsoft Excel with the appropriate columns in Microsoft Project. If you see a red Not Mapped line item, that means Microsoft Project cannot figure out what column in Microsoft Project corresponds to what you have in your Excel workbook. Well, I have task name in Excel, but the real name for that column in Microsoft Project, it's just called the name column. So I'll select the name field, and look, now it's going to map. The start date field in Excel, it maps to a field in Microsoft Project whose real name is just Start. And the Finish Date field in Excel, 
it maps to a field in Microsoft Project just called Finish. And lastly, Responsible Party Microsoft Project has no idea what that might be. Well, actually, it's the Resource Names column. So I'll select Resource Names. So on the task mapping page, make sure that you do match each Excel field with a corresponding Microsoft Project field. Go ahead and click the Next button, and then click the Finish button to import the Excel workbook as a new Microsoft Project file. Oh no. What? Look. There's no work breakdown structure built. Microsoft Project did not recognize the indenting I had done in Excel and then bring that over into Microsoft Project. So is there a way that I can set up Excel so that the indentation will correctly happen so that I get summary tasks and subtasks? The answer is yes. And now let me show you the secret. Here's the same Excel workbook as I showed previously, except I've added a new column named Outline Level. This is what is needed to get Microsoft Project to understand how to build the work breakdown structure of summary tasks and subtasks. For each deliverable in the project, such as scope, analysis, and design. Notice that I've put outline level one. For each task that is indented below those deliverables, I've put outline level two. What you'll need to do is fill out the outline level number with the appropriate level of indenture that you want for each of the tasks when imported into Microsoft Project. Now let's go ahead and give it another try and let's see if Microsoft Project can build the work breakdown structure for us. All right, let's see what happens when I import this newly updated Excel workbook into Microsoft Project. I'll click the File tab and click the Open tab again. I'll click the Browse button, and in the Open dialog, I'll click the Pick list in the lower right corner and choose Excel Workbook. This time I'll choose the updated Excel workbook and click the Open button. As you already would expect, we see the Import Wizard dialog. I'll click the button called Next. I'll leave the New Map item selected and click Next. I'll leave as a new project selected and click Next. I'll select only the Tasks checkbox because there's only task data in the Excel workbook. Then I'll click Next. As we already know, I need to choose the correct Microsoft Project field that corresponds with each Excel field. So Task Name maps to the Name field. Start Date maps to the Start field. Finish date maps to the Finish field. And Responsible Party maps to Resource Names. There, everything is now correctly mapped. When I click the Next button, I can now click the Finish button, and let's see what happens. And look at that! It worked exactly the way I hoped. We now have a work breakdown structure of summary tasks and subtasks 
in the newly imported project all because we use that outline level column with the numbers specifying the level of indent in Microsoft Project. Now, let me stress to you that when you import a project from an Excel workbook, there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done as cleanup and setup. The first thing I need to do is set the official start date for this project. I need the start date to actually be Monday, April the 7th. Monday, April the 7th. The easiest way to do that would be to click the Project tab to display the project ribbon and over toward the right end to click the button called Move Project. In the Move Project dialog, I'll click the New Project Start Date Pick List button. On the Calendar Date Picker, I'll navigate to April, and I'll choose Monday, April the 7th. Now, be forewarned that your Gantt bars will probably go flying off the screen. Why did that happen? Here's why. Every task, when imported from Excel, has a finish no earlier than constraint. I need to remove all of those constraints. The easiest way to do that is to right mouse click on the duration column header to choose insert column on the shortcut menu and then to choose the column called Constraint Type. Constraint Type. Widen that column as needed. Then select the first cell that contains the Finish No Earlier Than Constraint, click the Pick List, and choose the default constraint as soon as possible. Notice the first task's Gantt bar has already moved back into the correct schedule position. Then leave that as soon as possible value selected and use the following keyboard shortcuts. The first one is Control, Shift, Down Arrow. Control, Shift, Down Arrow to select every cell below it in the constraint type column. The second keyboard shortcut is Control D as in dog, Control D, which is the keyboard shortcut for fill down. That will fill the as soon as possible constraint into every task row in the constraint type column. Then you can just right click on the constraint type column header and choose hide column on the shortcut menu. The next item that you will obviously need to do is to set task dependencies. So let me go ahead and just set a few. In the scope deliverable section, all those tasks need to be linked as finish to start. In the analysis deliverable section, they're all finished to start. Then I need to link scope complete to conduct needs analysis. So I'll use the control key to select them and then I'll link. So after you've done all of this, you'll need to set task dependencies to tell Microsoft Project the sequence or order in which tasks will occur. And then finally, all I need to do is to save this newly imported project as a Microsoft Project file. So now you know how to set up your Microsoft Excel workbook so that the imported file in Microsoft Project automatically contains summary tasks and subtasks. 
I sure hope you found this video to be useful to you. If you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment. Also, if you'd like to hire me to provide Microsoft Project training for the project managers in your organization, please leave me a comment in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you right away. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.